Well, good morning, everyone. I'm Reverend Cherie, and the order of our service is a little different this morning. You're all, I can feel you want to stand and sing a hymn, but not yet. <laughs> we're going to work because we're going to do a lot of singing. Uh, this, this ministry, this community loves to sing. And so we have a lot of singing planned for you this morning. But I want to just uh, fill you in on um, the order of our service. We're going to celebrate Christmas with this beautiful uh, candle lighting ceremony. So our order will be a little bit different so that we can, when we begin the ritual, it can just flow uninterrupted and we can stay in that consciousness of peace and light and love. So our desire for our service today is to awaken that inner experience, which is Christmas, which is the Christ being born or reborn or awakened, reawakened in you, in me, in each one of us, in the collective consciousness of our ministry. And so we'll light candles and we'll sing. And as a special note this morning, some of you have asked if you can have a copy of the hymnal or buy one or whatever. And um, Christ Unity on Folsom Boulevard remodeled their sanctuary and took out the pews and put in chairs. And so they took out all their hymnals and gifted them to us. So these are the hymnals that have all the years of Christ unity sung from them. All the consciousness. I mean, when I went over and picked them up, oh, you could feel it. It was amazing. And so today, if you would like to take the hymnal home with you and keep it forever, you may do that as our gift and Christ unity's Christmas gift to you. There's more than just music in here. Just very quickly, there's some special readings there's a sevenfold affirmation that I want to share with you that comes on page 53 if you want to follow along. Listen to how beautiful this is for our awakening Christ spirit. Page 53. And in the hymnal, there's several special readings and all the words of the Christmas songs. And so it's really a treasure to add to your library. This says the sevenfold affirmation. I am a child of the living God. I have within me the all-creating power of the Christ. It radiates from me and blesses all whom I contact. It is my life, my strength, my courage, my patience, my peace, my poise, my power, my wisdom, my understanding, my joy, my inspiration, and my abundant supply. Unto this great power I entrust all my problems, knowing they will be solved in love and justice. O Lord Christ, I have laid all my desires upon thine altar, and I rest in thy graciousness. Now just imagine opening that up every morning at your kitchen table and reading that as you start your day. Isn't that a beautiful invocation? So feel free to take uh, one of the hymnals with you today. We would love it if you did. And then a part of our ministry would be in your home. A part of Christ unity would be in your home. And that would be just lovely. I want to speak a moment to the candles um, that we'll use are simple symbols. Something that Jesus may have used in his time. Um, and he said that we are lights, the light that lights every person that comes into the world. They have really no value in themselves except the value we give them and the response that we call forth from them when we light them. And we'll be lighting your individual candles also. And so we'll have a beautiful service and a beautiful reading of the um, metaphysics that we've been sharing in our Sunday lessons. And uh, so we'll get started with that. In order to not interrupt the flow of our service, we'd like to receive our offering now at the beginning of the service. And so I invite you to prepare for that. It's a surprise. <laughs> it's in a different order, but this allows us to really move into the music and the lighting and all of that if we have our Christmas blessing offering at the beginning. And so we'll give you a moment to prepare for that. <clears throat> and
And as you take your gift in your hand, I invite you to think for a moment of the substance of spirit that it represents, the supply for your life, where it comes from as the ushers come forward, where it comes from. Maybe it's your income, your retirement fund, your social security, your investments. It comes from ch different channels, but the reality is God is the source of your supply. And it's infinite and unlimited. And so in this moment of Christmas giving, of giving from the substance of the Christ, we bless your offering. We give thanks for you as an instrument of spirit, a channel of spirit. We bless and dedicate these to the will and the work of spirit in our world. Thank you, God. Amen. Sharon for Ode to Joy. We bless you this morning. And we bless and dedicate these gifts to the giver and the giver to the consecration of spirit, to the work of light in the world, its illumination, its wisdom, its healing power. Thank you, God. Amen. So in our ceremony today, I think I told you I was going to talk about Joseph and then do the ceremony, but when we met and planned the ceremony, we threw that out and changed it. So here's what's happening for us. We're going to light five candles. We'll light the Christ candle, and then we'll light five candles, and each one will represent one or two of the characters in the Christmas story. You remember at the beginning of the month I invited you to choose one of the characters or symbols in the Christmas story that you felt particularly drawn to, something that kept appearing in your awareness either through a nativity scene, a Christmas card, the lyrics in a hymn or whatever, that that was that character and its meaning speaking to you as part of that reawakening of the Christ, the birth of the Christ spirit within you. And so I invite you to... Picture in your mind's eye the birth of the Christ child. The story tells us that the story of the Christ child born in Bethlehem is the story of the Christ born in each one of us. And so listen as we light our candles and talk about the characters. Listen for the echo of the words. I am bringing you good news of great joy. For unto you this day, this day, in the city of David, in the within of you, is born a Savior, saving grace, who is Christ the Lord. Very powerful, very profound. Let this be the time of personal joy for you, the time of divine awakening of all that is great and good and wonderful arising anew from within you. Rekindling hope, optimism, faith within you. You are born of God and our lighting today is symbolic of that light that every one of us is born from. 
and it's you are worthy of it we are worthy and we're rejoicing glory to God in the highest this morning as we celebrate so I'm going to invite Claudia to come forward now and light the Christ candle and our affirmation will be Christ is born anew in me this day hallowed or holy hallowed be this presence within me Christ is born anew in me this day hallowed be this presence within me you might want to put your hand on your heart and feel after that together Christ is born anew in me this day hallowed be this presence within me yes and we want to begin by sharing the Christmas story from the Gospel of Luke <clears throat> In the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent by God to a town in Galilee called Nazareth to a virgin engaged to a man whose name was Joseph of the house of David. And the virgin's name was Mary. And he came to her and said, Greetings, favored one. The Lord is with you. But she was much perplexed by his words and pondered what sort of greeting this might be. And the angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. And now you will conceive in your womb and bear a son, and you will name him Jesus. He will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High. And the Lord God will give to him the throne of his ancestor David. He will reign over the house of Jacob forever, and of his kingdom there will be no end. There can never be an end to the Christ spirit in you. It's eternal. Mary said to the angel, How can this be, since I am a virgin? And the angel said to her, The Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. Therefore the child to be born will be holy, will be called the Son of God. And now your relative Elizabeth in her old age has also conceived a son. And this is, this, this is the sixth month for her who was said to be barren, for nothing will be impossible with God. And Elizabeth's son, as you remember, was John the Baptist, who baptized and anointed Jesus as the Christ. Then Mary said, Here am I, the servant of the Lord, let it be with me according to your word. And then the angel departed from her. Now, we will celebrate that by singing Joy to the World. And you know what? I don't have the number. Sharon? 280. Thank you. 280. Let's stand and start the celebration with joy to the world. 280. Beautiful, beautiful. Now, as I mentioned, as we light the candles, they represent the main characters in the Christmas story. And I invite you to think of them as they live in you. For each one represents a part of your soul that's making its journey to the full realization of the Christ. And so the first candle is lighted for Bethlehem and the star. And the word Bethlehem means house of bread. And this is the place where the story begins within you. Bethlehem represents your house of bread in your own soul. This is the place where the very substance of God feeds the whole of your being. Feeds the whole of your being. The substance of God is that place out of which every good thing takes place. Everything is made from the substance that is that shimmering essence of the divine. The star is the light that leads us to where the Christ child is born. It's that flicker in your awareness, that, that dawning on your inner self. On your inner self. 
maybe also audio for that dawning of your inner self. It ref the light of truth it's, that comes into your awareness that eventually leads you to your true identity as the spiritual son or daughter of God. That first flicker of, I'm so much more than this, this human body, this life experience. I am eternal, ageless, deathless spirit. And it is that first light, that star that comes to lead the way. The second candle is lighted for shepherds and angels. And the shepherds we have said in our lessons represent the part of us that keeps watch in the silence of our heart. They listen within to hear the message of spirit. And then they move to protect what's heard by keeping watch over the flock of their thoughts. The shepherds hear the birth of the Christ through the spiritual message of angels. And they're keeping watch over their, their flocks, their sheep, which represent thoughts. And they have a life-affirming purpose to protect those thoughts from predators like wolves and bears and, and whatever. So the shepherd is that which shepherds our thoughts as this light of Christ is being born in us. And they receive the message from the angels and the angels represent transmissions, the living transmissions of spirit. This is communication from the mind of God directly into your mind. And it comes in many ways. It can come as a hunch, as an intuition, a spark, an idea that sparks you. It can come as you pick up a word in just a moment, a book, a read, or something that you just needed. Angels can show up as ethereal presence or divine messages. In all, they embody that living transmission of spirit. They are the way that the higher realm of God moves through the ethereal realm to communicate with us. They bring good tidings of great joy. Their messages are always a blessing for you. Nothing to be afraid of, nothing to be fearful about. They bring great tidings of good joy for all people everywhere. And so we want to celebrate that again by singing Hark the Herald Angels Sing. And Sharon is going to, oh it's 274, number 274. And let's celebrate the Angels and the Shepherds 274. Beautiful. The next candle is lighted for the wise men. The wise men come from the east, we're told. And the east, when it's spoken to in scripture, means the inner self of you. The west is the external part of your life. And so there is this wisdom that rises from within you. It comes out of, out of your inner awareness. And when the wise men saw the young child with Mary, his mother, they knelt down and presented him gifts, meaning the wisdom of you, the wisdom that is you, bows down to the Christ spirit, which is over all, in all, and through all. They presented him gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. And you'll remember in our, in our lesson that we don't know that there were three wise men. It's never stated that there were three. We only assume there are three because there were three gifts, but we don't know. It's never been mentioned in scripture. The gold represents the divine substance of spirit, as we said, from which all things are made. It represents prosperity, which always comes to you when Christ is born in your life, when you live from that divine essence. Frankincense represents the innate beauty of your soul. Isn't that amazing? To honor the beauty of who you are in the very depth of you. And myrrh represents life. So it supports the eternal nature of you. The eternal nature of your spirit. That you are ageless, deathless, eternal spirit. You weren't born at birth and you don't die at death. You are forever, forever unfolding into this greater and greater expression of the Christ within you. 
So we see that the wise man in you or the wise men in you bring all of the inner resources that are necessary to live life abundantly in health, on purpose, in beauty and in every good aspect of life. And so let's honor them by singing We Three Kings. I love all the Christmas hymns that we get to sing today. This is really our musical, the Capital City Unity musical today. So We Three Kings, and it's number 281. Number 281. And we'll stand one more time as we're able. This next candle is lighted for Mary and Joseph. We think of, uh, as you think of the Christmas story this morning, think of it as happening in your heart right now, not long ago and far away, just some piece of history that was written down. The Christ in you is born when the conditions are ready in your soul, ready for this awakening to take place. And what are these conditions? The conditions that have to be present are in Joseph, who represents spiritual wisdom or divine wisdom. He's the within us, the part of us that says yes to the birth of this divine idea, this dawning and this awakening in our spirit. And then he moves to guide and protect and do all that's needed to sustain this beginning of something sacred and precious. And Mary, of course, represents love. The, the sacred feminine is that pure, unselfish love that is devotional. She symbolizes the part of our soul that prays in the temple daily, where we're in touch with our feelings and our emotions daily in order to give birth to the greatness of our spirit, in order to be a living expression of the greatness of our spirit. So, to give birth to the Christ, it takes spiritual wisdom plus love. Those are the conditions that must be in union for the, in union in you, in your soul, for the birth of Christ to take place. And it doesn't happen just one time. It happens over and over as we, as we attain a higher consciousness and a higher awareness, that coming together of wisdom is greater and love is greater and it just gets more expansive and more expansive as we give birth to our spirit in more powerful and profound ways over and over in our lives. This, lice, this last candle then is lighted for the infant Jesus. And of course, Jesus represents that infant or developing or new Christ presence within you. It is your true spiritual identity. It is the divine pattern in you and it grows day by day as you live in joy and peace and power and wisdom and life and abundance. And as that Christ spirit in you matures and grows stronger and stronger within you, you become an expression of the divine in your life, in the world, for the, in your workplace, wherever you are. You become God's divine idea. God's divine idea for humankind is expressed through you, just as it was expressed in Jesus. There is no more profound awakening, I believe, that can take place in your heart than a recognition, I am the Christ of God, that the Christ Spirit is born in me. In me. It changes everything. You can never go back once you touch that. You can never go back. You can go asleep to it sometimes. You can numb it out sometimes. But once it's sparked in you, the greatest gift you can give yourself is devotion to living it as fully and profoundly as you can every day in every way and so we honor that now by singing what child is this as we come into a time of uh, prayerfulness in our hearts and it's number 268 <laughs>
Beautiful. Now, keeping this sense of such a beautiful togetherness in our community, celebrating song, the hymns, the sacredness of everything, we take it now even more deeply into ourselves. And the ushers are coming for not the ushers, the board members are coming forward with the candles for each of you. We're going to give them a blessing. Hold on, fellas, Peter and Marty. Come er, er, er. forward so we can bless you. Yeah, we want to bless the candles because we know that they're just candles. But think about, I I loved when I read that Jesus would have used a candle. And so we're just, and when we did our big reveal that we have 2,067 years plus of consciousness in this room, it takes us right back to that time of uh, the first birth. And so let's just take a moment and bless this candle light, knowing that it is symbolic of the light that indwells you. We bless this candle in the image of the light that you were born into the world. Your life matters. You matter. You have purpose. You are on purpose to God as an expression of God. And we'll light this light to remind you of that. Thank you, God. Amen. Just, just pass the box. There you go. So we'll pass them through everybody's hands so that that gives us a sense of feeling of community. And I invite you to feel yourself begin to be filled with the light even before the flame is lighted. <laughs> and it's kind of funny when we do the candlelight service, whether, you know, before you get lit, we always say. <laughs> So I try to use the word lighted. (laughs) And feel yourself begin to be filled with the light of the Christ. And open to that deepening awareness of the Christ presence that is born in you again and again. That is with you in those doubting moments, in those dark moments, in those moments of celebration and joy, in the moments when all of the success of your life shows up, and in those moments when you're striving still for that success of your life, it be all that you can be. It shows up in your blessing as a parent or a grandparent. It shows up in your blessing as a work, a work employee or an employer. Shows up just for you, accepting you as you are. And we want to make sure everyone has a candle. I think Claudia and I will need candles up here also. Oh, we have them up here. Oh, we do. Okay, good. We have them up here. I know for many of you, this is like your 50th candle lighting service. I think it is from this. It would be for me. For us, it's our first, though. (laughs) It's our first here, yes. I ever knew, ever knew. And then Catherine and um, Marty are going to come forward to start with the lighting of the candles. And again, they're lighting off of this main candle, which represents the Christ light. And then they're going to light each candle on the edge of the row, and you'll pass it down and to each him. other. Oh. You want to turn to the... What? Am I going to turn behind him or Catherine? What? We're going to... It'll work out. You guys know how to do this. <laughs> you got it. They're going to light on the end of each row and then everybody's going to pass it down. You want to remember to tip the unlighted candle and hold the lighted candle upright as you pass it to your neighbor. This is the light of the Christ coming in and through uh, each one of us. comes off of the source of the one light and as we pass it to each other we'll see the very beautiful representation of how the Christ light increases in our world as we constantly give from one to another that which is uplifting, inspiring, joy-filled, light-filled Has it ever occurred to you that a candle does not lose any of its power or its brilliant by lighting another candle? When Jesus said you are the light of the world, he did so with the understanding that we have an unlimited source of light within us. 
and it is that inner Christ in you. So let's just take a moment now and be in the presence of this light. And as you look into your light, let yourself be filled with the love of Christ. Open to a deeper awareness of the Christ presence that's being born anew in you right now. Jesus said, I am the light of the world. You are the light of the world. The light that lights every person coming into the world. Let's affirm, I am the light of the world. Together, I, I am, am the, the light, light of, of the, the world. world. And let's lift our lights up and look around the room and say, I let my light shine. I let my light shine. And let's make a commitment right here, right now, as we hold our lights up, to be in 2018 a light to the world and a light that shines in our families, in our workplaces, in our country. Wherever we show up, we are an expression of the light. And you can bring it back down. May the gift of this radiant light of God dissolve every shadow in your mind, body, and spirit. May this light illuminate God's all-encompassing love in you. And may that love be with you through all the days and nights of time forever. May this light fill you with God's healing peace and spread outward from you until all can feel the wonder of its presence. I am the light of God. Again, I am, I am the, the light, light of God. God. Now in just a moment we're going to blow out our lights. But when we do, we symbolically take that light into our heart. We extinguish it in the outer realm, but we take it into the inner realm where it lives as an eternal flame of the Christ. The light that we can touch anytime, anyplace, anywhere and be renewed, healed, re-energized, fulfilled in its, in its power. Christ is born anew in me this day. Hallowed be this presence within me. And now let's blow out our lights. The third Sunday of December in Advent is love. And I want to share the unity word on living love. To the sound of the Christmas carols of opening More than anything else, Jesus called us to love. To love God, love ourselves, and love each other. We are to love our enemies as well as our friends. Jesus knew that unconditional love changes lives and changes our world. Love is always calling us higher. It beckons us to expand our compassion and understanding and to treat others as we would wish to be treated. When we live in love, we are radiating the essence of the Christ in us. And so let's close our time in prayer for just a moment. In Galatians it says, The fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, generosity, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. In loving presence, we let this awakening this morning be settled in us. Let it be tenderly tucked into that place in our hearts 
where we live and source from your being. May we draw upon the strength of this light, the power of this light, the love of this light, in any time of need, in any time of joy, in any healing need. If anyone in this room this morning needs healing, physical healing, mental, emotional healing, May the light of this presence flow in and through you, doing a mighty work. While we've lighted individual lights, the power of our collective consciousness, the power of us together as one, makes all things possible. I bless each one of you I bless our community at Capital City Unity. I bless our board, our volunteers, the bookstore, Sharon and our music, all who give and love and support, and all who come and are fed and blessed. May the year ahead be one of truth, light, beauty, health, and peace for each of us. Thank you, God. Amen. Let's breathe. (sighs) Beautiful. As you go forth, may you know that the light of God surrounds you. The love of God enfolds you. The power of God protects you. The presence of God watches over you. Wherever you are, God is, and all is well. God bless you, and Merry Christmas.